This is a fried chicken expert trying Korean fried chicken for the first time. Mm, chicken not bad. But what qualifies as a fried chicken expert? Meet Charles Gabriel, a southern chef who has been frying fried chicken since he was 7 years old. He owns a fried chicken joint in the heart of Harlem and has been serving southern pan fried chicken to the community for over 30 years. But to truly understand the history of fried chicken, we have to go back to West Africa where frying food in hot oil was a common cooking method. Now, it wasn't until the transatlantic slave trade around the 1800s when fried chicken was brought over to America. Since enslaved African Americans were often the primary cook in southern households, they combined their knowledge of African cooking with available ingredients to create what is now known as a southern fried chicken. And this became an instant hit. A Kentucky Fried Miracle. KFC to open a branch in Southwest China's Tibet Autonomous Region. Opens its 10,000 store in Hangzhou. Kentucky for Christmas is very popular now in Japan. And this inspired popular variations like Korean fried chicken, Filipino fried chicken, Taiwanese popcorn chicken. And as someone who loves these variations, you're on a one track path to become the cut avocado. Wow. I wanted to share this with Charles Gabriel to see what he thinks of Korean fried chicken. Will he be offended or will he like it. But first, we need to understand how authentic southern fried chicken is made. Hey, what's Welcome. up, Chef? How How's you it doing? going? How's it good, going? How's good it going? Good seeing you. Welcome in. Yes, Come yes. In. Oh, wow, look at this. My name is Charles Gabriel. I've been a chef for like almost 50 years now. I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I had 12 brothers and 8 sisters. I've been cooking chicken since I was 7 years old. Pan fried chicken it all came from my mom. My mom told me, you know, if I ever open up a restaurant, I always use a cast iron frying pan for my chicken. Yeah, pan fried is special because when you cook it in the frying pan, you're not smothering your chicken under the oil. If you cook in a deep fryer, then you're gonna absorb a lot of oil. First side, cut our chicken up. We cut our chicken, I cut my chicken in nine pieces, which nobody do. I have a big family, so, <laughs> so we had to get as much pieces out, the chicken that we could. This is my season here. This is a secret Yeah. Season. Wait, 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 wait. Let him try how to do it. Okay. okay. You, you see salt bay before, right? Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, 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 I need a little, little bit, a little dash. Okay, a little dash, right? A little dash. All around, go all around. Season your food well. If you taste some of this, it's seasoned well. You go, I go to a lot of places, the food is bland. It's not seasoning. And we really season our food. Everything is step by step. It got, everything got to be seasoned. The milk got to be seasoned, the flour got to be seasoned, and the chicken got to be seasoned. I don't measure nothing. I don't measure seasoning. I, I know how much for my hand to put in the pot. I don't measure nothing. I never had a measuring cup. <laughs> okay, now we go to the frying pan. How do we know it's hot? Do you test it? So you put flour in it. If the flour disappears, that means you're ready to go. The big piece will always go around. Okay. But once you seal it, that means the oil don't penetrate. But the oil not too hot. Oil oh, gotta be hot when you drop it. So you use the whole chicken. You don't care if it's chicken thigh, ch ch drumsticks, everything. Yeah, right? Everything. See, the thing is, I've never had a piece of chicken breast that was no. juicy and tender. I always thought chicken breast was not cookable. Hell no. You leave alone, right. you either grill it, but... Well, you see me here first. Yeah. But the problem is, you can't leave it alone. Right. You can't just drop it and walk away. You gotta stay with it, show each piece of love. And when you bite an anti chicken breast today, you gonna tell them. Different. And it's juicy? Them. Boy, if you don't get I'm excited, man. I've never... Only time will tell. Honestly, I've never had a good chicken breast before. I'm not gonna lie. Like, always chicken thighs and drums, right? Because uh -huh. it's, it's, it's a lot more juicy. It's dark meat. Yeah. White yeah. meat is just drier. Right. And it's, it is what it is. Yeah. But today, tell them. What you think? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna give my honest opinion, okay? I'm gonna give my honest opinion. Right. You can really feel the heat in the kitchen. Even everything, like the staff here, everything, it just feels like family, you know? Yeah. Most of the family style, you put everything in the bowl, we put everything, in, just like here. Just like it's set up here, that's the way we eat. That's why we welcome everybody when they come in. All we welcome the people that's coming in. Now live, you gotta let them know, it's hot. <laughs> okay, let's, film some, let's, let's, let's shoot this right quick, okay? Look at that, look at the skin. I'm gonna try some of the skin first, okay? Not greasy. And you just saw it fried in oil yourself. Yeah. You just saw it. Now squeeze the meat. Be closer. Now you said you never had a juicy breast before. You know the breast? That's the breast. You seasoned that, by the way. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. That's the breast though. Wow. Some fried chicken, you get through the skin, and that's where the punch is, right? The flavor. 
but then there's the aftertaste of the actual meat when you're biting into it, it's also seasoned. Now that I've tried some authentic southern fried chicken, let's see what Chef Charles thinks of Korean fried chicken. My name is Chef Kui from Charles Pan's Fried Chicken. I'm the CEO of the company, working alongside this great chef right here. He was a Hall of Legend. I knew who he was since when. I followed his legacy. I saw him on TV. I went to go meet him. Well, the thing he told me was, Hall of Fame's Hall of so he came here from Charlotte, Charlotte fed him, doing a hard time, he fed them. Coming from Charlotte, he saw lynchings. He was, rocks was thrown at him by the Ku Klux Klan members. Uh, he, like, he actually lived that. He picked cotton, he got beat. Like, he saw the, the worst of society due to combustion of your skin. I couldn't eat in the restaurant. I couldn't eat in no restaurant. I had to go in the back door to eat in the restaurant. I did, we couldn't go in the front. We had to eat in the back. That's why I wanted to feed the people because, you know, what I went through and what I came through and uh, just what I wanted to do. It's a better fried chicken at the end of the day. Are you serious? <laughs> it's no competition. I'm 340 pounds. I, I eat a lot. That, that is my thing. I have tried other coaches. Uh, I traveled. I love to eat. So I, I, I do dibble and dabble. Hey, all right, we're going to begin then. Let's go. All right, let's do it. So mine look juicy. Better look good. Yep. Yeah, it's nice and crispy, like a little sauce. But... The sauce is good. Mm -hmm. The chicken don't, it don't have that flavor. It don't have that, that kick to it. Sauce is dominant. The sauce is, uh, the sauce great. is delicious. So this is actually Korean fried chicken, and how they do it is a sauce dominant chicken, just like you said. They'll double fry the chicken, right, and then toss it in sauce to keep that kind of crunch and savory factor. That's right, it is sauce dominated, so whatever sauce you go with it, it's not as good. And they cook it perfectly, so no matter what they do with it, it's the sauce is great. Yeah. And then do you guys want to try the other uh, double cheese chicken? No, already, I think I'm gonna like this already. <laughs> I'm seeing the flavors, I'm seeing the herbs on it, I'm seeing everything. Yeah. Parmesan, you know, it's the cheese. The sauce is carrying. The sauce makes the chicken. What I like about it is that the sauce don't seep into the meat. No. But then that's the problem at the same time because the sauce is not dominating you too much. It's like, oh my gosh, too much flavor is not. It's perfect, but when you get down to the meat, there's no flavor in the meat. But then you go back next bite, you got that sauce again, you get happy again. So it's like, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Typically, Korean people like to eat the Korean fried chicken with some beer. They actually have a word for it called chimak, which is literally chicken and beer combined. Right, guys, I just realized I absolutely butchered the pronunciation. It's actually pronounced chimak. Chicken and beer, no matter where you go. Ludacris got a song called Chicken and Beer. Chicken and Beer is the South thing. I think it's just the peanut butter jelly. That's where it goes. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's twisted. We still have our lime mates. We still have our, our fruit punches. We still have all that. We st but chicken and beer is a staple when it comes to this. Because the, the chicken and the, and the flavor from the chicken and the beer, it kind of move together, you know, come together. To quote the yeah. incredible Will Ferrell, it tastes so good when it touches your lips. Once it hits your lips, it's so good. Beer, Do it. Beer, no. Beer. We got saucy. Saucy. Ooh. We you got, got that sauce, y'all. I love this energy. So we believe in the sauce too. <laughs> we believe in the sauce too. So when you come into Charles' house, you come to Charles' house. We love you. If you see your family, they're happy to see you. They're happy to see them. They go anywhere in the world, but they choose to come to eat this man food right here. So we're happy. This is where we're feeding the world. His mom recipes. I mean, so it's a happy occasion. Like we're family. I have two raiders for the chicken because I have the chicken cook and I have the chicken flavor. On that cook part, I would give it a nine. I would. I don't think you could get yeah. any better at all because it cook yeah, great. I would give it a nine, yeah. Now, for the flavor of the chicken, I would give it a six, six. for the flavor of the chicken. Because when you got down to the meat of it, it wasn't flavorful, I needed more sauce. Now the sauce was a 9.5. If you're going for that particular sauce, you eat that sauce, I want that for the flavor all the time. Feels good. <laughs> Since the chef seemed to really like Korean fried chicken, we were curious what they would think of other popular fried chickens from around the world. So we went out to order some of our favorites to see what they think. Here we go. First thoughts, what are your thoughts? Like chicken breast. Oh, so this is Japanese fried chicken, also known as karage. Kara karate? They call it karage. Karage. Yeah, karage. So if you notice about this chicken, they don't use any batters. No wet batters on it. It's purely dry coat. And then they fry it. And the skin is off? The skin is off. Yeah, the skin is off, yeah. Okay, no one of my favorites. 
<laughs> Everything is the sauce. The sauce what make the chicken. Yeah. I'm used to more flavor, a little bit more seasoning yeah. in it at all whatsoever. Um, it's fried and it's fried a little hard, but I get it. Um, but it's healthier than normal chicken. There's no skin in it at all whatsoever. So I can see, and it's smaller pieces. So when I get when I get a piece of chicken and I open it up, be able to squeeze the juice out of the chicken. It's fried a little harder, so it won't be that much juice squeezing out of the chicken. I'm giving it a four. Four, yeah, I will. <laughs> four, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a four. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether the carrot situation made a little drop for me, and yeah. even the dipping sauce is not as good. Not, as, not as good as the, as the other sauces. Sauce. Like, like I dipped it one time, it's not like, oh, I'm gonna go back. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm keeping the other one. I'm, I'm tasting that sauce. Yes. And I might even freaking make it, mix a little mix with some chocolate and fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would give this a, a four. The sauce. I wish I had this first, but this sauce is not doing it for me at all. The sauce itself is not not like the first chicken I ate, but this one, I give it for you. You're gonna have a lot more Korean people coming through, man. <laughs> Just look at Chef Kui sweating, and that's exactly how I felt when I had to ship hundreds of orders of our merch to you guys, but that's where today's sponsor, ShipStation, comes in. This was a life-saving service that helped us make all of this happen. For real, this is my account, and these are all of your orders that were shipped to you. We use ShipStation, and honestly, I don't even know where we'd be without them. So, what exactly is ShipStation? Good question. ShipStation is all-in-one solution, like your shampoo, conditioner, body wash, all-in-one that can integrate with whatever e-commerce platform that you're using. Time is money. So when you save time, you save money, better products get to the customer's hands. Everybody wins. We actually use ShipStation for our products like My Mom's Chili and also Hey, hey gang, our merch. It was just a really quick integration online and boom, all our orders are on ShipStation with super discounted rates to USPS, DHL, and of course, UPS. All of which are available in the US. And from there, all we gotta do is pay for the shipping label, print it out, slap it onto the box, and you're good. So, no more wasting time at the postal office, yeah. insane shipping prices, and worrying about whether or not your item was shipped or not. With ShipStation, it's all done for you. So if you're running an e-com business like us, I highly recommend you guys check out ShipStation for all your shipping needs. It's an amazing tool that will help you save time and money so you can focus on the important things like growing your business. Now, of course, we gotta get you guys the Ehey Gang a deal, a free 60-day trial to ShipStation if you use this link, shipstation.com slash cantomando today. And now, back to the video. What do we got here? Taiwan. Taiwan. Okay. Also known as popcorn chicken. Popcorn chicken, okay. So the story of this is that a couple people from Taiwan wanted to recreate KFC, but the chicken was too big. So they cut it down to smaller size pieces and then created this. It's like KFC and then it hit a little bit. It does have that cold and flavor. Unlike KFC, they don't have the skin that you crunch through. So whatever the herbs and spices are, I do taste it on this. This has more flavor. More flavor than the last one. Yeah. Obviously a lot of the spices that you guys you might use in the South, we don't have that. So they, instead they use popular things like, I don't know if you heard of five spice. But you can tell just, you can tell they, this was seasoned for a yeah, while they before they used it. Yeah. It was seasoned before they used it, you can tell. Yeah, because yeah. It, it, it is seasoned, it's brown seasoned. At first when I opened it up, the look of it wasn't appealing to me. It looked just dead. But the taste of it, it was like, oh wow, wake up. A high seven, so an eight? Yeah, I'll give it an eight. I'll give it an eight. Because the season is well yeah. seasoned, it's well seasoned. Yeah. Why you trying to take it? <laughs> I don't know if you guys tried this before. You know what, I wanted to. I, I haven't had the time to try Jubilee. This is Filipino fried chicken here at Jollibee. Jollibee, there we go, that's the name of it. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely did. We got some gravy over there. We got the fried chicken in the bucket, you know, and then we got some spaghetti. It just goes together. Gravy is heavy among yeah. our southern yeah. cooking staff. Yeah. Yeah. That's the sauce you need. Yeah. Yes, we actually yeah. make our homemade gravy and we braise our gravy with our pan fried chicken. Love the presentation. Love the little flags. Real cute. Let me dig this. Sorry, yeah. gravy.
chicken not bad. Yeah. Not bad, but still not seasoned that. Still not seasoned to the bone. I would like it a little bit more seasoned. But it hits. The spice is not spicy to me at all. Like, it, it, it didn't Spaghetti is good. Spaghetti is good? I love it. Spaghetti is good. So you love it? Spaghetti is good. Okay. <laughs> it's a little on the sweeter side. I can see why. So, African American culture, we put a lot of sugar in our foods, and we put sugar in our sauce. And it brings up something that he used to eat as a kid, because the sweetness of this. So you say it's a little bit on the sweeter side, you give it to us, and like, this is what it is. This is how it's supposed to taste, this is what we think. Yeah, so this hits, this hits home. You can get ready, you can get away with this. I would give it a, a seven, 7.5. Seven I would give it a seven, that. yeah. The chicken, though, I'm not a big fan of it. It, it. it didn't win me over. The spicy flag got me. So in my head, my brain said, spicy, spicy, spicy. When I bit to it, I was like, uh, I was let down. You know, you first eat with your eyes, so I, I expected a kick kick. There's no flavor in the meat. In meat at all. And that's where I'm gonna go with it. I taste what they were trying to go with, with the skin and the flavor, and you can see the, the little seasons on this at all. Mm -hmm. But there's no flavor on the, the meat, so the meat is not even spicy. The skin was the seasoning, but the meat, it's like it was uh, seasoned on top, fried, and take out. It, it wasn't, the flavor was not in the meat. With the salt-based seasoning, it gets into the meat. It, it sort of sounds like a little tenderizer. The back in the days, there was no refrigeration. You would put salt on your food. So the salt will actually act like an agent and gets down to the muscles and loosen it up and get down to the bone. This is my least favorite. Uh, I'm gonna have to go, uh, it was six? Yeah, I go over six, six. Uh, six, cool. I go over six also. Mm -hmm. I'll go with six, yeah. Nice. Right. Overall, what are your thoughts about fried chicken from Asia? Once again, I grew up in the hood, so being outside and going to the Chinese party and getting some chicken, this is a, a thing. Their goal that they're going for, it hit on their, all their goals. Um, I think my favorite one was from Taiwan. From Taiwan, man. Yeah, and then Japan. Flavor, the only one yeah. I could taste flavor all the way through. I can see how they uh, was working with us. Uh, the yeah. Southern style of cooking and sure. making it making it their own, and yeah. I, I do see it when it comes to the fried chicken. Once again, fried chicken is all around the world no matter where you go. It's a love, it's a fade. Yeah, Korean fried chicken was the closest yeah. and the best match through the fact that how the batter held, how they floured it, um, the thickness of it, the, the coating of the chicken, that, that was like my top number one. And no matter what culture, creed, religion you are in, chicken is just saying to everybody. It's a comfort food, it's a love, it's a fan favorite. I think chicken can unite humanity. Let's just look at it. We are not different. You like chicken? You like chicken? Oh, yeah, great. You're vegan. You still like chicken, right? Like, it goes great. Like, it just coincides with it. Chicken is a comfort food, easy grab and go. Um, you could get it wrong, but once you get it right, it's a go from there. You go offer me a piece of chicken, hey, you're my friend now. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> and you fed us a couple of pieces of chicken, so goddamn, we're best friends. <laughs> well, what this channel stands for is bringing family together. Like, you brought the dinner table to all your viewers, and we were sharing our food and our thoughts with you, which is amazing that this channel brought and made possible. You know, I don't know who's seeing us, I don't know what it is, but let's enjoy it together. Whatever you're going through at home, come down, get a table. We're eating together. Let's all be back and realize that we're family. All right, guys, if you guys enjoy watching today's video, make sure to click here to watch these two chefs go to a dim sum restaurant for the first time and click here if you're a Cantonese speaker that wants to learn some Mandarin. Peace.